Our God is an awesome God. Isn't that a statement of faith? I said our God is an awesome God. Wow. Glory to Jesus. We give the Lord all the praises and all the glories and all the honors for his majesty. This morning, we are looking at the last force. We are considering the force of faith. We have looked at the force of freedom. We have looked at the force of favor. We have also looked at the force of fragrance. Then today we are looking at the force of faith. And I would like us to take a reading from the book of Hebrews chapter number 11 Hebrews chapter 11 I want us to read from verse 1 to verse 6 Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 to verse 6 Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by faith the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the words we are framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen we are not made of the things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift and by it he being dead speaketh by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. I want all of us to read verse 6 together. I want to go everyone. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Is everybody reading? Hallelujah. Um. Let me stop and make a very important statement of observation. I have found out that the church is one place where people feel that they should not be told what to do. Let me warn you. It's a disastrous mindset. There's something I want you to understand about the church. The church is the school of the spirit. The church is the training center for kingdom citizens. Write this statement down. It will help you in your journey. 
The church is the training center for kingdom citizens. If you are going to be a citizen of the kingdom of God, that will matter in the last days. Pay attention to the things you are receiving in the church. Any church that is not training you to become an effective kingdom citizen is a wrong church. Leave it. If this place is not training you to be an effective kingdom citizen, Please may today be the last day you walk into this place. If you are not becoming an effective kingdom citizen, eternity will shock you. Eternity will shock you. It is important in training, we are meant to do things. In training, one of the most principal factors in training is instructions. And the Bible said instruction is your life. Instruction is your life. He that despises instruction is joking with his life. You know, these things I'm saying are the differences between life and death. Let me give you an example. You know, the way you feel that if a pastor tells you, read something, you say, I don't feel like reading, is the way God will tell you, don't move out. And you move out and get killed. And everybody will be here crying that you went to heaven. No, you can't go to heaven in, dis in disobedience. That singular disobedience can cost you your eternity. Nobody goes to, he says he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle or any what imperfection or blemish. Don't take anything for granted in this journey. Are you still here with me? Right. Okay, let's read. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. We're going to read together now as obedient children and citizens of the kingdom. Can we read together one to go, everyone? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Can we read it one more time with more understanding, passion, and authority? One to go. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. The force of faith. Now, in the journey of life, there are certain principal and important parameters that define and determine progress and success in the journey. And these parameters must be given prioritized attention in order for you to measure your journey of life. Take for instance in our world today. People measure their success in the journey of life with how much money they have, how much certificate, how much people that follow them, how much followers they command. The spiritual journey is not different. The spiritual journey has a parameter a crucial parameter with which you measure your progress. You know, it, it, it is important for you to know that without a measure of your progress in this spiritual journey, you are wasting your time. 
You know, I found out that there is this level of carelessness in the church now. You ask people, how are you doing? They say, fine. How do you know you are fine? I just know I'm fine. How did you measure your degree of fineness? I just know. You don't just know. Just like you don't just know you are healthy until you run some tests. There are people that are looking healthy, but when they run tests, their kidneys are failing. When they run tests, they find, they find two more in their body. Looking good is not the same thing as being good. Looking well is not the same thing as being well. There are people that look well, but they are not well. That's why you hear that he was walking and suddenly he staggered and fell down and died. What happened? He was never healthy or well, but he was looking. Are you following me? If he was healthy, he can't just fall down and die. It's not possible. A healthy man cannot fall down and die. It's, it doesn't happen. You know why? A healthy heart cannot fail. So he can't just fall down and die. If he fell down and died, something has been there that was never detected. Why? The man was never measuring the level of his wellness. Saints of God, how much you pray is not the measure of your spiritual wellness. How much you read the Bible is not a measure of your spiritual wellness. They have told us that's the measure. But even Satan has read the Bible more than you. Yes, Satan is not spiritually well. Through of us. Speaking in tongues seven hours is good. But that's not the measure of your spiritual wellness. The time has come for the church to sit down and truly measure our journey and say, this is it. This is where I am in this journey. That's the reason for today's message. Now hear me. I now ask the question as the Holy Spirit asks me, if you, if you mind, you can write it. What is the most crucial parameter that must be prioritized and applied in measuring our spiritual journey. You know, you have seen people that prayed hours and they are committing fornication. If praying hours is the measure of spiritual, spiritual well-being, he can't pray three hours and commit fornication. He must be too well. You see pastors that fast. After fasting, they carry a sister from church to hotel. If fasting is the measure of spiritual well-being, he cannot do it. Physical exercises, which we call spiritual exercises, are not measure of our spiritual well-being. I am here as a shepherd who cares. You know, last night I was just awake and praying and praying and praying for you, praying for Nigeria, looking at what is coming to Nigeria, looking at what we are going to suffer, looking at what the church will face. I was crying and praying. I was crying and praying. But God has told me and said, Son, I don't want to fix Nigeria first.
right. Let's go. Amen. Uh, sorry, our online audience. We didn't know what was happening with our generating set this morning. All right. So I said that God made it clear that before he fixes Nigeria, he will first of all fix the church in Nigeria. He will fix our prejudices. He will fix the hatred between the Igbo church and the Yoruba church. He will fix it. He will cleanse us from this suspicion and hatred and ambition and tribalism and ethnocentrism. He will fix us. So a new Nigeria is coming. But not now. You know I told you before. I told you in this church. I said are you praying for a new Nigeria. When the church is not renewed. It's not possible. It's not possible. But what is coming. We face the church. <laughs> we will cry like the children of Israel in Egypt. By then there will be unity of faith. And purpose. Everyone will see we really, really need repentance. And then we'll repent. Oh, man of God, what are you saying? Why do you think I was quiet all this while? I wished it had come now. But it seems it's still some time away. The church is the agency of change in Nigeria, not the political system. The prophetic is what governs a nation, not the politics. Oh. A nation is governed by its prophetic mandate and mantles, not by political movement. By a prophet, the Lord led Egypt, Israel out of Egypt. By a prophet, he preserved them. The journey of a nation is a prophetic journey, not a political journey. The day all the anger and acrimony and suspicion and eccentrism and pollution and prejudices in Nigerian church, the profitability is the day that all the suspicions, hatred will be cleansed away. How can we have the church of Jesus Christ? We are, we are suspecting one another. Prejudiced towards one another. How can you call that the church of Jesus? Is that the church of Jesus? Come on, talk to me. Is that the church of Jesus? It can be. It can be the church of Jesus. God does not grant your wishes. God works according to his wisdom. If it's not in alignment with the wisdom of God, forget it. The church must come to the place of the wisdom of God. And when we come to that place, we will all seek God in unity of faith. You know, the church, the early church noticed this early. The Bible said the Christian widows were complaining against the Hebrew people that they are not sharing, doing well. Immediately, the apostles arrested the division immediately. They called a meeting of all the churches. Nigerian church noticed that we are divided along tribal lines. And we kept quiet. We are assuming that God will fix it. No, God will not fix it. We will fix it. We will fix our divisions. We will fix our acrimonies. We will fix our anger towards one another. We will fix our hatred. We will come to the place of brokenness and repentance. When we do, God will birth a new nation. 
tell anybody who cares to know. I've been saying this over many years. I've been calling for repentance. If you're a witness, say amen. amen. You remember somebody telling you that you should ask your pastor which secret sin or whatever he's committing that is making him to call for repentance all these years. Very soon we will know our secret sins. Me and my secret sin. Oh Lord, my secret sin is that I am crying for the church to repent of hatred. Prejudice. Acrimony. Distrust. 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 Can you imagine where somebody from the east looks at the church of Jesus Christ pastored by a western pastor he calls it Yoruba church and then somebody from the west looks at me right now and says Omoibo church how can this be the church of Jesus Christ and we pretend that nothing is wrong the faith of God does not work in an environment we are the wisdom of God doesn't have supremacy. So I want us to know that we ask the question, what is the most crucial parameter that a believer must prioritize in this spiritual journey? What's the most crucial parameter? If somebody is asked, some people say faith. No, not faith. What is it? It is the measurement of your progress with God. That is the most crucial factor you must always consider with God. The measurement of your progress with God. I want to ask you a question. When was the last time you checked where you are with God in your journey? Tell me. No, tell me. When was the last time you asked yourself, where is God and where am I in this journey with God? Where am I? In my journey with God. Where am I? The most crucial parameter a believer must weigh in and consider is that a believer must consider where am I with God? Where is God in my journey? Where is God in this travel? Where is God as I am journeying? Brothers and sisters, if this is not your priority, I want you to know you are not in a spiritual journey. Why? Notice, if it's not a journey with God, is not actually a spiritual journey. If it's not a journey with God, it is not a spiritual journey. You are taking a walk in a realm, but not with God. Because the journey called spiritual journey is a journey with God. It's a journey with God. That was the most important focus of the ancient patriarchs. They were too concerned about where they were with God. How can you be journeying? You know the Bible spoke about Mary. In the book of Luke chapter 2. The Bible said they went with Jesus. As usual. The Bible said after the feast. They kept going assuming that he was in their company not knowing they left him behind in Jerusalem and they traveled for one day notice what the Bible said the Bible said in book of 2 Peter 3 that a day is like a thousand years before God that means a man can journey a lifetime not knowing that God is not with him Thank you. 
Assumption is not revelation. The Bible spoke of Mary who came on that resurrection morning and she came in, in the book of John 20. The Bible says she looked and saw that the stone was removed. She assumed they have taken away the Lord. And she was preaching her assumption as if it's a revelation. She went to Peter and said to Peter, they have taken away the Lord and we don't know where they laid him. And that assumption triggered the running. And Mary and Peter and John began to run. I want to ask you a question. What are you running with? Why are you running? It will shock you that a lot of people running a race don't even know what they are running with. Peter ran. John ran. But what were they running with? They were running with the assumption of Mary as if the assumption of Mary was the freshest revelation from heaven on earth. Let me say this to you. Many people are running but they are not certain of what they were running with. Can you sit down and check what you are running with? The Bible told me that John went inside and saw and believed and the question is, what did he believe? He believed the assumption of Mary because he used the evidence to confirm the assumption. Evidence is not a confirmation of truth. I have evidence, I have evidence. Evidence does not certify truth. Evidence is not the efficacy of truth. Mary, uh, John also went in, the Bible said they saw, he saw and believed. What did he see? He saw the napkin and the linen and he believed what? What did he believe? He believed that the assumption of Mary was the newest revelation in town. And what happened after they believed? The Bible said they went home. They went home. That very thing you received that didn't trigger you to seek for how you will walk deeper with God is not a revelation. Now hear me, saints of God. If it is not a journey with God, it is not a journey of faith. If it's not a journey with God, it is not a journey, a spiritual journey. If it's not a journey with God, it's a dangerous journey. It's a disastrous journey. Sense of God, why is it important? A lot of people are running a version of Christianity that is too dangerous now that can be risky. How do you measure your progress with God as you journey? I will ask you two measurement questions. Measurement question number one. Do I please God? Measurement question number two. How much do I please Him? Pleasing God is the parameter for measuring our progress with God. Brothers and sisters, I stayed awake this morning. I was, I was praying and saying to God, when was the last time I checked whether I was pleasing you? Please tell me the truth. If they give you mic now to, for you to answer, when was the last time you asked God, how much were you pleased with what I am doing? Why is this critical? It is critical because this is where faith is. The life of faith is the life of pleasing God. The life of faith, the force of faith is a push and a proportion to please God. 
Every other thing is secondary. When was the last time this church asked God, are we pleasing you with our services? When was the last time we asked God, is our music pleasing you? When was the last time the choir leader said, Lord, what we sang last Sunday, did it please you? Or did we just come to church to enjoy ourselves and assume that you were pleased? Lord, did my offering please you? When a church and God's people stop focusing on pleasing God, there is a problem. For the primary reason for faith is to please God. The primary reason for faith is to please God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. That's why I told you to read it. For without faith it is impossible to please him. He didn't say it's difficult. Impossible. Tap your neighbor and say impossible. Tap, tap somebody and say impossible. He didn't say difficult. He said impossible. That means this is a reality that can never happen without faith. That means it is telling us a secret. That faith is given to the saints and the church for one reason. To please God. You to be cast out. Amen. This has never happened in the course of our service. Lord, I rebuke every devil of darkness trying to interfere with today's service. I command you to be cast out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. can somebody say better amen? amen? If you want to say amen, say better amen. amen. Notice. What was the testimony of God concerning Enoch? Take a look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. It said, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Take a look at the later part. For before his translation, he had this testimony. Not testimonies. Oh, Jesus. Saints of God. Did you notice something? He said he had one testimony. God took a man from the earth. Are you preparing for rapture? Enoch was an example of the rapturable church. The church that God can take. He didn't have testimonies. Now look at it, saints of God. If you don't have a testimony of buying a car, you, you think you don't have a testimony. If you don't have the testimony of miracles, of healing, of this, what was the testimony of Enoch? One testimony. He pleased God. He pleased God. I want to ask you a question. What testimony are you seeking? Testimony of a new building, powerful. Testimony of a new car, wonderful. Testimony of marriage, oh Jesus, beautiful. But if this testimony is not your testimony, 
you are not preparing for translation. For he had this testimony that he pleased the Lord. Saints of God, as we conclude the month of February, the second month, I want to ask a question. What is your testimony? That's why we're teaching the force of faith. Without faith, it is impossible. Why did God give you faith? Why did God give you faith? I want to show you. God gave you faith for one reason. So that you can please him. For Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 define faith for us. Is faith is having a strong conviction that God is. And then consciously and committedly and diligently seeking to please him. That's faith. Faith is not a gift you we are given to collect things from God. For when you please him, he gives you everything you need. Faith was given to us for one purpose, to please God. For without it, nobody can please him. You know why? Because God is a God of faith. I will give you the facts about faith quickly. And we begin to pray. Precious saints of God. Faith is not what we are given to get things from God. Faith is a primary gift to us from God to please him. So the force of faith is that propulsion and push from God to please him at all times in all things. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and verse 10. I will read. Colossians 1 verse 9 and verse 10. We are going to read that scripture and you will see. For this cause, we also since the day we had it, we had of your faith and your love. If you read it, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all saints. Do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Did you see the desire of Paul for the church? He said that you might please God in all things. Walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. In your thought you please him. In your mind you please him. Do you know there are people that are sitting in church now displeasing God by the way they are thinking? The thought you are thinking is hurting your relationship with God. The thought you are thinking in your heart is hurting your relationship with God and you continue to think it. Do you know there are people God can rebuke in church? Once God say anything against what they believe, they shut down. You have become a God to yourself. Why do you go to church? Sit down and seek for who will worship you. He will clear you in the eye in eternity. Saints of God, what is going on now is something that calls for serious concern. How can a church exist without asking, Lord, are we still pleasing you? a believer exists without asking God, is my life still a pleasure to you? How can you believe him? As if anything you do should be acceptable to God. Then you have become a God. No longer a servant of God. If a servant lives to please his master, a son lives to please his father. He didn't save you to invent things for yourself. He saved you to please him. 
He delivered you to please him. Every time we talk about faith, we talk about how to collect things from God, how to take this and take that. That is not the primary reason for faith. Faith is given to you to bring God pleasure. When you rise up, God will look at you like he looked at Job and he will call Satan and say, Satan, come, have you considered? When was the last time Jehovah boasted with my life? When was the last time he called a meeting and said to all of heaven, have you considered Steve? It gives me a great concern. I ask God, what am I raising for you? A children who never cared whether they are pleasing the Lord or not. Is this what I'm raising for you, Lord? A people who don't care if they are hurting you or not is none of their business. They just table. You wake up every day, you list for God what you want Him to do for you as if He's your slave. You tell Him where you want to go. And tell him to bless it. You tell him what you want to do. You give him your plan. And tell him to run with it. That is the new version of Christianity. We have. And that's an unbiblical version of Christianity. That's a dangerous one. That's the one that will not take us to heaven. Nobody whose primary priority is to please God. If your primary priority is not to please God, you will make heaven. For what will God be doing between heaven? You will come and become the second devil because you will come. What heaven is doing will become a boring situation to you. For instance, in heaven, did you read Revelation? Every two minutes, they will throw down their crown, collect it, some of us will say, Kilo D, excuse me, you will tap one of the elders and say, uh -uh, if you throw crown, leave it there now. Why are you picking it up again? Uh -uh. What kind of thing is this? Throw crown, pick it, throw crown, pick it. And this is what you have been doing since I came here. Eh? It's been two days that I came here. You have been doing this. Whereas they have been doing that for eternity. Because throwing crown down, taking it is what pleases Abba. And they will do it for eternity. For pleasing him is their priority. How do you go to a heaven where pleasing the father is not your priority? You won't make it. It's time for the church to re-examine our faith. The Bible said in book of Corinthians... 2 Corinthians, I think chapter 13, I think so. He said, examine yourself to see whether you are still in the faith. Examine yourself. Examine yourself to see. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not that your own self, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except if you be reprobate. When was the last time you sat down to ask the Holy Ghost, give me exam question concerning this journey? Nobody is promoted without writing exams. Why am I not writing spiritual exams? How can you move from 100 level to final year? without writing a single exam. Are you sure you are progressing? Am I sure we are progressing? How can you tell me that you are moving from 100 level to PhD level without an exam? When was the last time the Holy Ghost sat down and wrote an exam and gave you exam questions to which you answered? And one of the major questions is, how are you pleasing God in your journey? Everybody's doing it. And when you looked into the heart of Abba, Abba said, and you could face all the back, backlashes from everywhere just because you want to please him. Can you imagine the son of God at 33 years just to please the father? 
was walking towards his own death. Just because he wants to please him. In this year of the will of God, one of the principal things you do in the will of God is to please him. And faith is what is given to you to please him. Brothers and sisters, it's time we get home, kneel down, and say, Abba, when was the last time my prayer pleased you? When was the last time this life came up to you as a sweet smelling savour? When was the last time my journey gave you pleasure, Abba Father? When was the last time you looked at me and what I am doing is like a sweet smelling incense coming up to heaven? Have I become a nuisance to the agenda of heaven? Have I become a disturbance and a distraction to what heaven is arranging? greatest desire and drive is to please God in all things at all times at all costs write it down how do you know you are still in the faith when your greatest desire and drive is to please God in all things at all times at all points at all costs it doesn't matter what it costs me I want to please you I, want, I don't want to waste a lifetime I don't want to waste a lifetime ancient of days I don't want to waste a lifetime the force of faith is that divine proportion that makes a man to seek to please God with everything he got. That's the force of faith. When you see a man of faith, you see a man that wants to please God. Do we want to please God in Nigeria? Does the church in Nigeria want to please God? Because the pastors want to please God. Can you imagine we a pastor? We know that a member is living in sin. He can't tell him because the member is his keyboardist. Because the member is the bassist. The member is the lead singer. The member is the one mixing their media. So if I tell him now who will miss the media, let the media hang. I'd rather not mix a media in iniquity. We'd rather shut down the media if it is in iniquity. We'd rather not have a keyboardist if it is on, in unrighteousness. That I might please you. That I might please you ancient of days. If this is my cry, grant it to me. I want to please you, Father. I want to journey in a way that when I return home, there will be a standing ovation. Angels will say, here comes a man who laid down his life to please the ancient of days. I want to stir up your heart. Change your desires from pursuing things. Let the force of faith give you passion to please the Lord. That is the force of faith. 
When you see a man traveling under the force of faith, his journey is about what is it you want. Here am I. I am all yours. Not seeking my own. I'm here to do your will. I am all yours, oh Lord. Here am I. My life is yours. Sheka tala breketu sanita. Can you just pray quietly and say, Lord, reset my priority. Kali lahate. Esko talabre katosa. Liama kukukika kayo kopele tuade. Eluake kata kamalotiana. Eswa balinga balinga kwatendeleka. Eshe kotalaga. What does it mean to be a pastor that pleases not the Lord? It's a waste of an office. I don't want to be a father that doesn't please the Lord. It will be a waste of journey for me, Father, if I live not to please you. Help me. Hey, Jesus. Release into my spirit the force of faith. Aya. How do you know you are still in the faith? Your greatest desire and drive is to please the Lord. Your greatest desire and drive is that when the Lord looks at me, He will say, This is the Son in whom I am well pleased. That was the only testimony the Father gave of Jesus. He said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Abba Father, where is my own testimony? Where is my testimony? Where is my testimony? Where is my testimony? Twice you spoke from heaven over Jesus and you say you are well pleased with him. Father, where is my own testimony? Am I wasting a journey? Am I wasting a journey, ancient of days? Am I wasting your investment in trying to pursue what I wanted? Ah, show me your mercy. Cleanse me from the ways of man. Cleanse me from the false doctrines of faith. Cleanse my heart, ancient of days. Kabora Bakasata. Ah. Ah. The force of faith is the force that propels a believer to please God. If he's not pleasing God, he is not under the propulsion of the force of faith. Sometimes we call the, the push of the flesh and the pull of the flesh. The push of our own desires and demands of our selfish interests and desires. We call it faith. Faith propels a man to please God. The force of faith pushes a man to please the Lord. I want to please you, Jesus. If that is your cry, ask the Holy Spirit to baptize you with fresh desires. Baptize you with fresh drive. <laughs> Baptize you with fresh definition of life. Tell the Lord to remove every definition. Every definition. Warped, twatted, twisted definitions. Can you begin to pray wherever you are right now? Come on. Lift up your voice and begin to pray wherever you are. As you bow down your head, begin to pray and say to the Lord, Let there be release. Let there be release of fresh definition of life. Fresh definition of spiritual journey. Fresh definition, Lord, my heart is open to you. Sheketele bregedoka satana bregedegedele karabadosa. 
Shed the Baragadaka Dara Bara Bara Gada Gada Gara Badaya, said the Lebreka Deca de la Gada Bada Bada, Shada Dada, the Labarada, and Satarakata Gadara Barada, Erika da Gadara Bado Sada Bada, Ereteke de Rika da Gabarada Gada Gada Rabada Baya, and Swata la Brenda Gada Gada Rabadaya. Can you praise the Lord? Purge me from everything that is not faith. Purge me from everything that is not faith. Open your mouth and begin to pray wherever you are. Esetele kada kabara kada rabara bada kada ya. Shede dere kada rabara bada kada rada ya. Esata la kada kada rabara bada ya. Eswata la kada kada ya tarabada ya. I don't see people who are passionate this hour. Can you cry out to the Lord and say, "Purge me from my own ways. Purge me from the ways of the flesh." Purge me from the ways of man. Purge my heart. I want to please you, Lord. I want to walk. I want to walk. I want to walk. I want to walk with the Lord unto all pleasing. Shede de borobo sa da ra ba ra ba da ga da ya eskete re ba ra ga da ga da ra ba ra da eswata la ba ra ba ra ga da ya heli ga da ga da ga da reke de ke de ke de re ba ra ba da ga da ga da ra da ya rata ka da ra ba ra ga da ga da ya ra ba da ba ya masete re ba ke do sha da ba ra ba da heli ga da ga da ra ga da ga da ra ba ra ba ra da ya.